Ooh, that's kind of impressive. Tell me you're not impressed, viewers, and I will call you a liar. 160. Time on target. Hypersonic. Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Last week, we did this battle, The Dance of the Vampires, the chapter from Tom Clancy's Red Storm Rising. We did a one-to-one -one scale battle based on the chapter. You guys seem to really enjoy it, but you've requested a follow-up. What if we replace the mid-1980s unit with 2020s units? How would the attack have gone then? So we still have the same battle set out minute for minute, mile for mile, but we're going to run two variations. The first variation is we're going to have the Soviet units remaining 1980s units, but we're going to upgrade the US and French carrier group to a 2020s carrier group with 2020s aircraft and weapons. Then we're going to run the thing again, but this time we're also going to upgrade the Soviets to 2020s bombers with hypersonic anti-ship missiles and see how that goes. First, scenario one. As you can see here, we have the original attack. I'm going to assume that you've seen the first video, so I don't have to explain everything again. But we've got the 80 badgers, where they were last time, with the Celt decoys. South, we have the 70 Tu-22M backfires with the Kingfish missiles. We have the fleet in the middle here, defended by her 48 aircraft. This time, those aircraft are not 1980s Tomcats. They are 2020s Super Hornets, and each of them is going to be equipped with AIM-260 JTAM missiles. So a serious upgrade on the 1980s Tomcat. Also, the French F-8 Crusaders are being replaced with... I probably should have used Rafales, but I'm not. I'm going to have F-35s. We've got to get some 5th gen in there somewhere. f 35 sees in this case internal loadout of six JTAMs. And finally, the carrier group. This is a description of the 1980s carrier group. It's 33 units. For the 2020s, we've scaled that down to 22 units. One carrier with 48 Super Hornets, 16 F-35Cs and Hawkeyes. The three U.S. Marine Corps LHA landing craft remain the same. Escort ships, we've scaled it down to eight. Four Ticonderoga CMPs and four Arleigh Burke Flight 3s with the same 10 auxiliary ships. The escorts in the 1980s variant were all armed with the first version of the SM-2 missile. The 2020s escorts will be armed with SM-2 Block 3s, with SM-6 Block 1s, SM-3 Block 1s and ESSM predictions. If you remember what happened last time, very simply, a decoy force occurs at the top and you're going to go and shoot it down with your Super Hornets and you're going to have no real problems doing that. Then at 16.34 Zulu time, the backfires appear and shoot the Kingfish missiles at the fleet. Questions I've got for you. With the F-8 replaced by F-35s with long-range missiles, will you be able to shoot those backfires down at 130 miles before they launch their missiles? And even if they do launch those missiles, will a 2020s carrier group be able to shoot them down this time? Because famously, of course, the 1980s group could not defend itself sufficiently and three carriers were sunk. I think they stand a much greater chance. Uh, the rate of rate of fire with the, new, the more modern missiles and stuff like that will provide them a much better opportunity to knock the missiles down before they get too close. I just hope they don't run out of missiles. I hope they don't run out of missiles, but they've got lots, uh, many more than the 1980s units because the ESSMs come quad-packed. So we get 64 of those plus another 60 or 70 of the larger missiles. Right, guys, well, let's go and find out. Welcome in. Today's human pilots are fired at Simba Strider. Simba, when ready, please unpause server. First, the 2020 stripped down but much more powerful fleet. Harley Burke Flight 3. Modernized Ticonderoga. Amazingly, the carrier is still a Nimitz carrier. They are going to serve for many, many decades. The stealth attack from the backfires. 70 of them. some corrections to make from last time viewers two corrections first correction um i talked about the color of the afterburner of the tu-22 being blue 
and I said it was due to the sulfur content of the kerosene that the Russians used. Some of you have corrected me and said it's actually because of the uh, optimum efficiency of the burn. Another correction, um, the decoys, the KD-63s, I said that the AI could not intercept those and they had to shoot at the bombers. Uh, in fact, I can force the AI to at least try to find and shoot at decoy missiles. I have tried it and I've not had much success with the GR-2020's missiles, hence I've left it as the original at the moment. If someone's firing something, what's being fired? Ah, the decoys are in fact being fired right now by the badgers. As per the book, these are being fired at 460 miles from the carrier group as decoys for the Tomcats, or Super Hornets in this case. So a zoomed out view. That is 80, that's seven regiments, 80 uh, badges. Distance between Super Hornets and the badgers, wow, 250 miles. It shows the huge scale of this battle. Now the F-14s got there pretty quickly. They're very powerful, fast fighters. Super Hornet, not so much. Restricted to about Mark 1.4 with this big loadout I've given them. So they're gonna get there slower, but they can fire at longer ranges. Let's have another nice look at the backfires. And another look at the badges. In fact, the decoy missiles. And the badges themselves. Uh, my super bog drivers, do you have a mark meter on board? 1.2. Yep, mark 1.43. 1.43. Wow, that was a lucky guess. I guessed no. four. You're topped out, yeah, guys? 1.4. Yeah, you topped out. Viewers, you're going to ask why I've got them in an Australian livery, and I don't have an answer to that. Uh, the reason is I've literally just noticed that. But they're in an Australian livery. All 48 Super Hornets are now engaged, and of course this is what happens. All of the Tomcats or the Super Hornets got engaged, and then the TU-22s. Oh, go on in one more time, viewers. Snuck around the back, as it were. Distance, 130 nautical miles. They are just one giant bright blob on my FCR. Right. Swarms are so difficult to target. We're in a strange situation now, viewers, where we're well within firing parameters, but because the badgers have got their jammers on, no one can actually get a track on them. Uh, they're too far away from the E2 to fire on data links, so they're going to have the boys are going to have to fire on their own radars. So we're going to have to find the burn through. Let's see what distance that is. First missile out from someone. An AI has found burn through at about 95 miles. It begins, viewers. All the JTAMs out. Seven JTAMs. Pretty much the 2020s model variant of the Phoenix in the 70s. Big line of JTAMs. Two JTAMs out at a cost of $55 million. First JTAMs, 50 miles from hostiles. First JTAM does see hostiles. In real life viewers, these JTAMs would loft and attack from above like the Phoenixes, but there are certain restrictions we have, so in this case, they're going to go straight to target. 41 JTAMs out. My humans are firing. 48 JTAMs out on 80. Bombers. JTAMs are down to a thousand knots. Bombers have got no way of knowing these missiles have been fired. Are we fired on a silent radar lock? 62 JTAMs fired. Wow, that's a lot. All the way back here they're being fired. Right. Enjoy.
One down. Where the heck are the others? Two down, three down, four down, five down. Oh my. Oh, so many coming in. Sixteen bombers down. Nineteen bombers down. Twenty bombers down. Twenty three. 26. Thirty six bombers down. Super box merging. Have fun, guys. Expect friendly fire, obviously. 41 bombers down. Full eight splashes. Oh, that, that all happened long ago. Sidewinder's going in. 46 bombers down. You guys are absolutely freaking mopping out, boys. There's just something mesmerizing about this. There is a bit, isn't there, Fred? Guns, guns, guns. I oh, apologize, I had to clear my throat. Simba in the rear with the gear. 50 bombers down, 30 to go. You're killing this so much quicker than the uh, Tomcats did. Three badges down, 27 to go. But imagine the fuel is getting quite low by now. Yep. The Tomcat value is still after this long. Yeah, they'll have exactly the same as the uh, problem the Tomcat, they'll all run out of fuel. Sixty-three bombers down. Oh the killing's just accelerating now. Sixty-five bombers down, fifteen to go. Probably more hornets in there now than badgers, so watch your fire, guys. Sixty-eight bombers down, just twelve strappers to go, guys. Two minutes to clean it up before you've got to switch to F-35s. Shot. Good efficacy from the missiles, bearing in mind how chaotic this was. 190 missiles fired, viewers, 74 bombers destroyed. That's pretty good for any missile. Six bombers remaining, one minute to go. Five bombers remaining. Four, three bombers remaining. Well done, you lot. That really is my boys being my boys right now. One bomber remaining. One bomber remaining. All bombers destroyed. Well done, everyone. Everyone despawn, but do not spawn into your F-35s yet. You've got 30 seconds until the TUs are detected at 6.34 local. Uh, sorry, Zulu. Zulu. You may spawn in your F-35s in three, two, one, now. Clean up scripts run. All the uh, super bogs have gone to save memory. And now my 16 lightnings are in. Guys, the hostiles are pretty much right in front of you for about 130 nautical miles. Can you do better than the Crusaders did? Well, almost certainly you can, because you're in friggin' F-35s. 212 magnetic for 102 nautical miles. 
So now, viewers, we've got to see if the F-35s can intercept these guys before they fire their Kingfish missiles. They will be jamming, and they do have very powerful jammers. It will make a big difference in when we can fire in distance. Range, jamming. Yeah, it's the jammers. 90 nautical miles. Come on, come on, come on. If you do intercept them at some point, remember they've got rear-facing radar-guided guns. Sam's out, Sam's out. Oh, SM6 is being fired, viewers. The fleet is defending itself at 120 nautical miles. So we've got SM6 is out, no JTAMs yet out. Why? Oh, first JTAMs out from AI. They've burnt through the jammers. Things are really hotting up, viewers. The hostiles are 117 nautical miles from the carrier and they've not fired the missiles yet. They're not quite in range of the 1980s. Well, they're actually kitchens, but they're playing uh, AS-60s. Well, this is jolly good fun, viewers. No missiles out yet. They can do it. Whole bunch of JTAMs. <gasps> 40 miles. I even run this through, so I don't know what's going to happen here, viewers. Why don't we watch it from a freaking JTAM? They may very well do this. Which would be kind of annoying, because if they do manage to shoot them all down, we don't know whether the carrier group would have defended the kitchens. But we're all doing it one-to-one -one scale and fairly, as per the book. Oh, you seconds away, guys. Kitchens are being fired. Dog, damn it. Right, once they're fired, I'm running a clean-up script, unfortunately. You're going to hate me for it, but I'm going to get rid of those bombers. We've answered the question. Okay, I've run the clean-up script. The bombers are gone. No, the, the JTAMs are not fast enough. The SM6s are not fast enough. Now, guys, you've got to climb and try and shoot down the KH-22s. Go, go, go. These are supersonic 1980s anti-ship missile viewers, and they're quite nasty. Even in today's battlefield if deployed in numbers. And we've got 140 of them here. 140. Currently running about Mark 3. Okay, my boys are shooting them down with JTAMs. Yes, good hits. JTAMs heading. Well done, boys. Keep doing that, S. They're quite big and they have a big radar cross-section, viewers. Good splashes. Keep it going, keep it going. A lot of missiles are coming out from the ships now. Wowee! If you want to know how many missiles have been fired and what type, viewers, look at the top right of the screen. 209 SAMs have been fired by the carrier group. A mixture of SM3, SM6, SM2, basically everything. So these are really big $12 million SM3 anti-ballistic missiles, viewers. And in they frigging go. Bang! And they're working. That is 2020 technology, viewers. That's what you wanted to see. Those are SM3s. Hugely costly, but amazingly effective. One missed. Two missed. Pigeons are on their descent, and this shows how even in 2020s, 1980s gear is very hard to destroy. Missiles maintaining three times the speed of sound. I have to imagine the SM6s are now hitting. Quick peek out what's going on. Okay, now we've got these. ESSM, close in defense. De literally designed for anti-swarm. Oh, it's touch and go. It's touch and go. Look, AIM-260 is still trying to catch them up. The, the boys are fired. Come on, guys. Save that freaking carrier group. Look at that. Look at that, viewers. Spider's labyrinth of beautiful American architecture. ESSM's pinpoint. They're They've got their own radars and they're very, very accurate. Oh, they're not going to do it! They're not going to do it! Or are they? We're within about 20 miles of the carrier group. Come on! Come on! Three. Missed. Three missiles, come on! Save them! Two missiles! One missile! Hit 
Oh. Oh. No, one minute I've got through. Come on. That is too unfair. Yeah. Sea whizzed. Oh, my heart, viewers. Wowie. That was kind of cool, guys. I guess we're getting to a point where we don't really need the fleet defenders anymore. No, really. Just use the friggin' SM6. Let me go over the stats of that, viewers. Red losses. 80 badgers and no TU-22s because I had to despawn them to... Otherwise, the server would crash. Obviously, I had to test stuff in the background, but they would have been destroyed. The boys would have caught them up easily and smashed them down in 2020s F-35s. Uh, red weapons fired, 220, 140 anti-ship missiles and 80 decoys. One, only one blue plane lost a bog in a kamikaze attack. Blue weapons fired, 274 JTAMs, six within visual range sidewinders, and a staggering 353 SM3, SM6, SM2, and ESSM, and a few Seawears bullets at a total of 2.3 billion US dollars, but critically, no ships hit. What an amazing expression of modern technology. Viewers, next, welcome in viewers to the second simulation. Um, the first thing to say is there's no defending aircraft. Why? It's because I've had to strip everything out apart from the fleet, one AWACS and the attacking Tu-22s. They're all going to launch hypersonic missiles. Um, there's only 40 of them this time, but they're carrying twice as many missiles, so it will be the same amount of missiles, uh, 140 missiles. These are new KH-47 M2 hypersonic missiles, maxing out at about 10 times the speed of sound for anti-ship use. They are modern Grim Reaper's weapons, which take much more processing power than the core game 1980s weapons, hence why I've had to strip everything out. Don't worry too much, we've proved that the F-35s could not intercept these guys in time. They could almost intercept them, but they were a few seconds out. Plus, these missiles actually have a bit more range than the 1980s weapons. So guys, just enjoy. 47 M2 hypersonic missiles, simultaneously fired time on target against a US model, US 2020s carrier group. Give me some predictions. As much as I hate to say it, I think the carrier group's in trouble. Yep. Yeah, they do fast. The same amount of missiles that are a third of the speed almost got through. So... The same amount of missiles three times as fast, Mark 10 instead of Mark 3. Yeah, I'd say nothing could defend this, guys. I think it all depends on if the boats can deconflict and not fire at the same missiles. It's not that they can't track them and shoot at them. I think it's more of a can it deconflict. I think that's what I was trying to say is that is because they're going to be able to the missiles are going to be impacting faster that they'll be able to deconflict and see which ones are dead before they shoot all their missiles off. I think the carrier group can fire at them i know they can fire at them uh we've built the sm3 to fire at these missiles the sm3 is an anti-ballistic missile the uh kinjal is a semi-ballistic semi-hypersonic missile it's in the job description we should get sm3s the problem with sm3 is viewers it is not does not have its own radar it's guided 100 percent all the way by the mothership radar that means it chews up one of the finite fire control channels in these uh radars in these fire control radars on the ollie burks and the cmps now, a lot of people say, but, but hang on, a modern ship can track hundreds of targets at once, uh, 500 targets or whatever, and yeah, it can, but it can't fire at all of them at once. It has a very finite amount of channels that it can fire and guide missiles on. Uh, now, that's okay if the missile's slow, and it can shoot a bunch of missiles, let it explode, shoot a bunch more, let them explode, shoot a bunch more, let them explode. But these, this is going to be seconds of travel time. So I think, yes, it will be able to hit them, but because of the limited amount of channels and the need for a fire control radar to guide SM3 all the way, I think you're going to be screwed. The King Jal, of course, um, is being used in Ukraine against Ukrainian targets to moderate success, but it wasn't designed for that. It was designed to take out American carrier groups. Uh, how would it be guided in real life? This is where I need CH uh, viewers. I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully he'll comment in the comments but probably from a uh, bear a recon bear or something i'm guessing is how they would have an up-to-date picture of the carrier's exact position is this the same one that the mig 35 carries yes it only carries one though because it's tiny uh this is a much better version it carries four of them i will say this if nothing else the kinjal missiles are very ominous looking mm -hmm. all right looks very similar to not japan china's yj21 missile which does the same thing apparently up to map 10 and uh, semi-ballistic there are some missiles out somewhere i just can't see them oh no it's sam coming Sam's from out. right so the sam's are outranging the king jarls it's not the actual king jarl it's the problem it's the sensor on the backfire viewers that's searching for the carrier group that's where the limit is at the moment 
that's strange that they're SM6s, not SM3s. I would have imagined it was SM3s. Well, I'll take it back, viewers. I think SM3s will only be used if uh, missiles are being fired, as it is an anti-ballistic uh, missile. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they're shooting at the planes, aren't they? Duh. SM3s will probably come out once the missiles have been fired. Where they go? Oh, where they go? Missiles away. Oh, that's kind of impressive. Tell me you're not impressed, viewers, and I will call you a liar. 160. Time on target. Hypersonic. Uh, I've despawned them, obviously, to save memory. Okay. Everything. They've pressed the everything button. They've pressed the friggin' everything button. Everything's gone up. Look at the rate of fire. Yeah, I can with confidence say that I'm not impressed as this is a video game. That's true. It's true, guys. Look at it. That is how much firepower they can put in the air at once if they push the fire everything button. That's 232 SAMs up in about 30 seconds. That's even more impressive than the last time, and I didn't think I could be any more impressed. Right. But look how fast they're coming in. They've got seconds. Seconds to destroy these things. Not sure how to get a good viewpoint, I'm afraid, viewers. 4,000 knots, viewers. That's mark 8 in my head. And down they come. No idea what's about to happen. Controls being destroyed. More missiles going up. Oh, oh no, no, they got through. They got through. Some have been destroyed, but not enough. They're just too fast, guys. Where are they? Yeah, here they go. Bang! Mark A right through the carrier. They went so fast. Look at that. Spider's webs of... Now, how many got through? I don't actually know. I'll see if I get attack view from it, but I probably don't. Oof. My viewer base is not going to be happy, guys. So, uh, let's reiterate, 160 King Jowls were fired from 110 nautical miles. Some were shot down, but not enough, clearly. 323 missiles were sent out to destroy them, which is enough missiles, but just not enough accuracy. Uh, one ship was sunk because the King Jowls always go for the biggest radar cross-section ship at a cost of uh, 7 billion to the destroyed carrier and 1.6 billion to the missiles but that said all of those backfires would be destroyed as well by the uh, air fleet arm um, guys i'm going to go and quickly see if i got a attack view from that now in real life their trajectory is they will go up and come more or less straight down we cannot model that unfortunately and maybe that would make them harder to defend against maybe not i don't know right so all of those missiles 320 odd yep they're hitting them you see every time you see a box it's taking one out but it's not enough. It's nowhere near enough. Let's have a look at the details of what's going on there. Yeah, look at that big failure rate in the missiles. Just too fast, too many. Interestingly, if you just send a few, a handful out, we've done several videos showing that the carry group can actually take them out. Up to about uh, 40, I think, we've sent. And it takes them out fine. Fire all of these. 100 and, what if this 140? No chance. Too confusing. Too much swarm. Here can be ESSMs, but by this point it's here, and here's the problem with hypersonics. By this point, it really is too late. Because look at how much reaction time you've got. And they're taking them out now, just not enough. Probably only about 10 taken out. No, about 20. Maybe 30 taken out. About 100 have got through. And SeaWiz can't fire anything this fast. Well, you wanted a 2020 modernised version of Dance of the Vampires from Red Storm Rising, and we've given it to you. Make of that what you will. I hope you enjoyed that, and bye-bye.